Welcome back to Let's Play Spyro the Dragon Reignited, Burning Dog fans. We're starting on the pause menu, because I wanted to start over by the big stone dragon head. You know, talk to the dragon in the platform there and remind myself of, ex of exactly what he said I needed to do. I was 99% sure that it was a, uh, you know, free ten dragons and come back kind of thing. And now I'm 100% sure of that, because we're here on the pause menu, because the moment I walked in, it started moving! Oh my. You said the boss is in here. Toasty. I have a bit of a sore throat today, or I would attempt to make the noise from Mortal Kombat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please, by all means, Google the words Mortal Kombat Toasty. This doesn't look like a boss fight. Yeah, those guys aren't wizards, are they? They're just shepherds. That's why they have curved sta staves, I should say, not staffs. The only people who can get away with that kind of pluralization are the Toronto Maple Leafs. What is oh, it's a dog. Don't... Oh, but I could hit the dog! No! My organs! Uh... No! He's gone! You killed my dragonfly! Oh, monster. Oh, I have died. Oh! I have died. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Mmm, mm, don't like that. Damn! The window on that felt tight. I didn't even know if you could follow that, but I dodged right before he would have smashed me. Notably, not an ability that was in the original game, as you will recall. Uh, yeah, Unified Control Scheme, they added that ability to the first one. Ow! You shitbag! Shepherds, you have an idea how annoying it is for me to have to murder a dog? Make me the bad guy, will you, you shit piece? Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to point out about the uh, the rolling there, it you know, uh, buyer beware, I guess. <laughs> um, he always rolls in the same direction, which means if you hit right bumper, he always rolls to his right, no matter which way you are facing. We're gonna have to be careful about that. He defended his master. Good boy. Oh, this sucks. Oh, no! I don't like the fact that I haven't seen a single, like, chicken or frog or whatever here. I assume the chickens are more of those things. Incineration! Now I'm down to the green! Huh. Nope, not confirmed. Not Super Mario 64. 
No! How dare you do that? Oh, hey. No! I've been crushed again. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Alright, you fuckers. Oh, wait, but if I kill them all, then I get points to get more lives, and... Ah, I don't know if I should even take them on or just try to avoid them and keep running past. Ah! Oh, man, I'm too far away for that. Let's go. Charge! Oh. Evan. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Is it me? Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. I can honestly say I was not expecting a scarecrow. And in fact, I was wondering why they would, they would throw a boss called Toasty at someone who is presumably fireproof. Hi, Spyro. Uh. Yeah, I don't like this. Why is there a goddamn dog here, too? Alright, that problem has been solved. Alright, setting him on fire is really obvious. Sympathetic noises, god damn it. Ah, uh, this is like in, um. Pathway. Pathway, that's what it was called. The one where you encounter Nazis and their attack dogs. And there was an option to turn off the sympathetic whimpers when you kill the dogs. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It uh, changes it so instead of the dogs falling down and dying, they just disintegrate into pixels. You know, so they don't leave, like, a bloody dog body on the screen to make you feel bad. A lot of this game seems to be running right at an enemy, breathing fire, and then immediately veering away. Damn it! A chicken, you say? Oh, but... All right, I'm gonna have to kite the dogs out one at a time. Like that. Oh, that really works. What an ugly sheep. Death to you! Toasty indeed. I didn't see any tricks up his sleeves, incidentally, just swinging his scythe at me and leading me to dogs. And away I go. And so, with the sheep incinerated, our hero returns home.
Well, I'm not going back there now. I need to go get some health. Oh, hey! He just pops back into existence. Sure, okay. Nice to see you again, Spark. Sorry about that. Here's some lunch. I'm trying not to think about the fact that the butterflies might also be people in this universe. Hey, what happens if I talk to you now? Hi, Spyro. Cool flash! Do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. I'm going to be honest, I'm actually weirdly impressed that they bothered. Well, you know, that they came up with alternate dialogue for a PlayStation 1 game. No, I should be specific about that. A PlayStation 1 platformer, you know, it was like a JRPG, like Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, I would understand that. Yeah, the sheep don't actually pop out of existence there. This is the 1998 censorship code hiding them from your, you know, innocent eyes. <laughs> this is not the oldest game I've ever played, for the channel, I mean. And I mean, okay, technically this game came out in 2018, but still... Huh. These big stone cinnamon rolls seem to glow when you touch them. Oh. Holy shit! Hop, skip, and jump. Achievement unlocked. Uh, find a hidden entrance to Sunny Flight. Bitchin'. Uh, I'm curious. Nope. Oh, Stonehill, burn the hidden pink tulip. Town Square, all bulls stuck. Oh, I hate that. Hmm, that suggests... Uh, I immediately know what they want me to do there. Because every... I mean, I, I didn't even let them live long enough to see their proper attacks, but pretty much every other game I've ever played that had a bull enemy in it uh, had... A thing where, like, they charge into a wall and their horns get stuck and you have to wail on their bodies while they're helpless. Don't touch the water. Apparently this, uh, the dragonfly doesn't like it. I'm going to be honest with you guys and admit that I did not immediately get the, uh the dragonfly pun, but I did get it by the end of testing, so there was that. Um. Um! Oh. Oh, I'm just fucking flying. I guess we're following this train! Or not. Oh. Let's not dogfight those guys. Oh, I see! That's what those plus threes mean. Oh. Oh no. Oh, hey, that didn't actually work. Okay, oh my dear sweet Jesus. All in one? Are you kidding me? Also, they didn't give me plus three seconds. That just seemed to be a target. Why does it say plus three on it if it doesn't... Oops. Okay, that... X does uh, make you charge forward, just on the ground, unhelpfully. Melted! You see the golden chest...
What? No. Alright, this isn't working. Ah! Oh, and simply because I don't think I've shown it off yet, I do enjoy the fact that if you're using mouse and keyboard controls, the mouse cursor is Sparks. Aww. Aww. All right, that one worked. Oh. Uh. Stupid reverse flight controls. Get those planes. No. Ah, uh, well. Oh. Oh, well, yes. Um, no, actually. Let's not do that. Let's go see if we can find that hidden, uh, tulip in Stone Hill. There was this close friendship back in the day between the uh, an Insomniac and uh, Naughty Dog, who at the time were the Crash Bandicoot guys. And apparently the reason for that was that their offices were literally across the hall from each other in... Uh, I don't know what you'd call the place. You know, Sony America Headquarters, I guess. Right. Okay, well, this is a hidden area. Let's look down here first. The nice thing is it's very small, so... Oh, yes, that's right. I also didn't find a key, curiously enough. People who played this game back in the day, throw me a bone. Does that actually do anything when the fairy, like, casts a spell on me? Uh... How do you find a hidden flower? How do you hide a flower? Exactly did it say? Wrong one. Uh, burn the hidden pink tulip. Pardon me. Alright, not a button, just checking. But I murdered that guy already. I don't even think he enjoyed it very much. I don't even see any big tulips in this level, to be honest. Yes, door. 
Cyborg. I'm just sitting over there on the floor. How funny. Oh, by the way, I haven't actually done it in this video. I suddenly, in this uh, you know, first set of videos, I realize. But um, you cannot uh, burn the trees. They are apparently uh, also fireproof. Where did I go from there? Yeah, up there. So the fire can go through, it's just not me, huh? Weird. Well, hey, if you noticed a tulip at any point while I was running around on this level, feel free to drop me a timestamp or something. Lord knows I tend to be a little oblivious. Ah oh, yes, that's right, I sprinted through this area because I was chasing that guy. Oh, come on, it's literally a pile of leaves! say, you know, hidden. <sighs> Unsatisfying. But I guess I'll just head back through the portal, since I'm not actually sure how else to trigger a save. You know, that guy said it happens when you walk over the thing, but I haven't seen the little running Spyro logo in the corner. And considering it shows up in the options menu when you change the options, uh... I figure it should show up. I'm just wondering, oh, what if one of these is disabled and the, you know, we can walk a little bit past it, you know? Just one little gap. Ah, damn it! I thought I brushed onto that one. Shite! Oh, right. Ow. I like that banner with a dragon that's made of a paintbrush. I don't know what it means, it's just cool. Wait, was this the painter one? No, he was in, uh, Town Square. Alright, off I go then. I did notice, by the way, the last time I was on the, uh, guidebook, up in the top left, 559 out of 12,000 gems. Yeah, okay, okay, I guess that, uh, explains that. You know, the number they dropped in the opening cutscene, I mean. You know what I haven't tried? Alright! This door is just painted on. 
I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Spyro the Dragon Reignited when we continue run frolicking around and trying to get our hands on as many gems as possible. I'm not actually sure what I'm meant to be doing now that I've beaten the boss, but I'm sure I'll think of something. <laughs> Later!